hello anyone that is watching. My name is Morgan and I am so excited about this evening and sharing with you all today. I am based in Arizona and I would love to know if you are watching along, feel free to leave a comment and tell me where you're from. And you could just say, hi, I'm so-and-so and I am from wherever you are logging in from <laughs> this evening or this afternoon or whatever time zone you find yourself in. And yes, it's just so exciting to see everyone here. And um, yes, I'm looking forward to just sharing with you all some poetry and some artwork. This evening we had um, so when people were uh, invited to join this, you were actually offered to share your story. So I actually got a chance to read some of your stories and I got a chance to respond to some of your stories. So I'm super excited about what, I'm super excited about sharing with you some of this artwork that came from that. And yeah, so thank you so much for being here. Like I said, my name is Maureen Harper Nichols and a little bit what I do is I am a visual artist and a poet. I use this little guy right here, which is an iPad to make a lot of my artwork. However, I like to incorporate lots of different elements and lots of different textures and whether that's, um, I have a background in, in art in the sense of like, I've always loved playing with paints and I've always loved playing with art. So here's actually something I made today. This is a, a piece that was made from, um, from a young woman who is in my community. And I actually wanted to just share a little bit of her story. So I made some art surrounding a portrait of her. So lots of mixed media, lots of um, mixing watercolors and textures and all that kind of thing. And art to me is just, it's a way to connect, especially during a time where so many of us have had to change or reevaluate how we connect with people. For me, art is just a way of really truly saying, hey, we're still in this together. We're not alone. As, as so, even though sometimes it feels that way. I see one comment, someone's from San Francisco. Hello from San Francisco. I lived in California not too long ago. I'm currently in Arizona, but I love, I love San Francisco. I, I did, I did all of the cliche things that one does when they're visiting your city. And <laughs> I absolutely loved it. It was such a lovely, lovely experience. Um, so yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. So to get started, I actually wanted to share with you all something that I hadn't really shared too often and that I, haven't, I don't share too much and that is a song. So I write a lot of poetry, I share a lot of music and um, and also, I just want to add that I won't be able to see the chat while we're going, but if you would like to ask a question in the chat, feel free to do so. And at the end, I will, I will um, answer your question. You can ask me super technical questions about how I make my art, how I got into doing this professionally or whatever, or you know anything like that, you are free to ask and I will be glad to answer. So um, this song is actually called Heading Home because I know for me, I, the definition of home, sometimes it seems to change, you know, if you've moved to different cities or if you've just lived in different places, you can probably relate to that, just trying to find home where you, wherever you are. And that's where this, that's what the song is about. And also just about um, um, being home in my body as well, so. I am in the valley, and I am headed home. I am in the valley, and I am headed home. Holding both joy and sorrow, this is my song. Deep in wells of grace, I know I'm safe. I'm where I belong. Oh, I am in the valley, and I am at it home. I am in the valley, and I am at it home. Holding both joy and sorrow. This is my 
song about living in the valley and as I started to write it because I'm, I'm physically <laughs> in the valley where I'm living um, I just start to think about how that metaphor applies to so many different things and for me I love to to share music and to bring music into what I do because you know even when it comes to physical painting I feel like painting I feel like music I feel like putting poetry into paintings is like the closest that I can get <laughs> um, to bringing music to a painting. So obviously when you look at a painting, there's no you know, music in it. So that's why I like to bring a lot of poetry into my art. So yeah, it's all connected, which that brings me to um, the lovely stories that were submitted. And I just got to sit and take in your stories. I just inhaled some of your stories and, exhaled them through poetry and art. So I want to share some of that with you all. So I'm going to share my screen here. So yes, here we go. You should be able to see that. Hopefully you can. Um, let's see, I guess the, the chat has disappeared. So I'm going to, oh, there's the chat. So hopefully everyone can see it. And I'm so grateful that you allowed me to share the so first we have for Chandler. Chandler, you shared your story with me, a story of transition, of moving, and I wrote the words, your growth may feel slow in the space, but it will be growth all the same. You are going to look back and find you have changed in beautiful, unexpected ways. And the way this piece came to be was as I read Chandler's story, I just started painting. I don't know why I gravitated toward orange with this. I just, sometimes I just try to trust my gut. And I was like, I just wanna paint something orange. I'm not sure why. So I just started going with orange. And as I started to paint, a lot of my poetry process is literally just thinking of how I would respond to that person. So obviously if it's someone that I don't know, I'm limited, but, at the same time, I like that limitation because it makes me think of like, okay, based on what they shared with me, what is still true, what is still resonant, and yes, that's what I that's what I wrote. Um, I know, you know, I, I won't share the details of the story, but I know that there was talk about feeling stuck. So I just wanted I wanted Chandler to know that it might not feel like it, but there's still growth happening there's still something coming to life and maybe that's the why the orange came to be it's just this fieryness <laughs> that orange speaks you know it's just it's like fire so yes i was, was really excited to create that piece 
And this one's for, for Genevieve. Uh, Genevieve's story gave me lots of, of, of imagery within, within the story. So I really just kind of ran with that. And one of the things that Genevieve talked about was just um, being by the ocean and, and how the ocean like really spoke to her and then also being in the desert now, which I obviously could connect to being in the desert myself and having left, having left the ocean myself. So I really connected to that part of what she shared and this is what I came up with. And here's what you have learned to be true. The ocean will teach you many things and the desert will teach you too. In both places, the sun is shining and reminding you, you have traveled through so much and yet still there is more to you. I could go on and on about what I love about this imagery of just like thinking of the ocean, like when you're at the ocean shore, you can think about how there's endlessness there and that those waves just remind you there's more there's so much more than what we see i'm mean, no pun intended s-e-a-c <laughs> there's so much more than what we see there's so much beyond what we have access to and then at the same time you know at first glance you know a desert may not seem to have that same inspiration or that same abundance and endlessness but at the same time what i've learned in moving to the desert and seeing i'm just like wow these these fields, this desert, it goes on and on and on. And there's like an endlessness to that too. That's also beautiful. They're just different kinds of beautiful. So I really wanted to play on that imagery. Um, you know, it's, if nothing comes to mind immediately from the poetry and I just really try to think about the physical nature imagery that someone mentioned and, and that's something she talked about. So I just went with it. The next piece is for Evita. I hope I'm saying the name correctly. And Evita just shared a story of resilience and overcoming. And I just really wanted to, to honor that. And yeah, it was just one of those stories I was right. I was like, yeah, there's just so much endurance and resilience here. And I just want to, to speak to that. So I wrote, after everything you have been through, Grace has continued to, to find you and you have risen above yesterday, having grown in beautiful ways. So this is a piece of just wanting to affirm that and to speak to that truth. I, I very intentional about using the color purple because purple means many things. Um, purple is a, is a color that represents spirituality. It's a color that represents mystery. And what I personally love about purple is that purple is a mix of, of, a, of a cool color, blue, and a warm color, red. And for me, that just speaks to like the sort of like fiery warmth and, and love that we are craving in life and also the deep blue unknown sea of mystery that also happens in life so I just kind of see those <laughs> two things coming together and that's kind of how it came to be and on an artistic note I was really pleased with creating this piece it, it just really spoke to me because of these leaves that I drew. One thing that I like to do a lot is I like to just kind of go crazy and just like, so I'm painting digitally. I use an app called Adobe Fresco and they actually just released an app for the phone this week too. So if you're interested, you can use that app. It's wonderful. And it's called Adobe Fresco. And what I do is I use this one brush called the wet edge brush. And I just like push into my digital canvas and just let things happen. And then I take the eraser tool and then I use the eraser tool to kind of refine the edges of the leaves. So yeah, in a way I feel like life is like that. And I feel like just the story that Avita shared with me is like that of just all of these things happening all at once. And now looking back, you can see the shape, you can see the growth. And yeah, I just really, really enjoy being able to create that piece. And this one is for Sheena. I had a lot of fun with creating Sheena's piece. Uh, one thing that Sheena expressed was just being in a season of, of like, of like really accepting like two parts of yourself, like this part of yourself that's peaceful and that's just so um, kind of, you know, just really peaceful and going with the flow. And then this part of yourself that's that's kind of more of, you know, follow the rules, make sure you do everything right type thing. And the merging of those two things. So 
I'd be interested to know if you guys can see the, that merge between those two things here in this piece. But before I get to the art, I will speak about what the, um, about the poem itself. Take heart, breathe deep, keep going into the depths. You have learned so much about who you are and you are still not finished yet. And on the right here, you'll see sort of like these lines and I kind of picture them as like lanes in a way of like kind of staying in the lane. And it's also coming from the right side which is like the right thing to do. It's like stay on the corner, stay in the lane, make sure you're staying where you need to be and don't lose sight, stay focused. And then the other side, it's just like this wave of blue. I always associate blue with mystery, like a calm mystery, I don't know. And just, that's just kind of like, and those two things can coexist, they can both exist. And that's what this piece is about, just like, you know, as, as we learn more about ourselves, like it doesn't always mean we have to leave the other part of ourselves behind. Like, I know I felt that way when I started to <laughs> pursue a professional art career, I, I was really struggling because I was struggling to balance that business side and also the artistic side and how to merge those two. And I feel like I would go through seasons, I still kind of feel this way now, where I'm really hyper-focused in one area and the other part is really hard for me to tap into. So yeah, I enjoyed creating this piece because I think I could just really relate to it. And finally for Melissa, actually, this one is really, um, I actually, so this is kind of weird, but I, I got Melissa's story last. And the interesting thing to me is that I actually, um, I actually had started working on the artwork before I even knew that I was going to be writing for Melissa. So once I got that message coming about Melissa's story, I, I was like, wait, I think I already started that piece and I didn't even know it. It just kind of happened beforehand. I don't know. I just felt like it was connected. So I had started painting this, this yellow, golden um, rush of color, water, water, watercolor wash coming in from the right. And then this sort of structure on the left. I painted that first and then I wrote the words. Um, it has taken everything within you to keep going. And yet here, oops, I have to fix that typo for you. I'm so sorry, Melissa. And yet here, here you are through the wild of fears. Oh, you have come so far. And what Melissa's story had a lot to do was literally going from the east to the west. And when I look at this image now, I can kind of see, I literally started, um, I, I'm sorry, going from, yeah, going from the east to the west. So I actually started on the east side of the, the painting and sort of rushing into like, the sort of structure of like, okay, I'm creating new structure in my life. I'm creating something new. So yeah, I was just really happy that came together because I didn't think that through when I was making the art. I hadn't even seen, I hadn't even seen the story, but when I read her story, I was like, oh, I know exactly, I know exactly what the art is for that. So yeah, that that is those pieces. And I'll also, you know, also share these later so you guys can see them and you can have them if you would like. But that's just a little bit of, of my process and how, um, how I think about things and in, in terms of making them. And then there is, um, you know, beyond just how I think about it, there is the actual the actual texturing and the making of it as well. I know it's a little bit hard to see with the iPad here because it's, um, oh yeah, that's completely white. <laughs> uh, but I, I did want to show you all very briefly just what, the, what a time lapse kind of looks like um, creating a piece like this. So this is how this piece came to be. So as I mentioned, I this is just a time lapse of showing um, how I how I create this piece, and it went very fast. But it, <laughs> essentially, it's it's pretty simple in a sense of like I just allow myself permission to just kind of paint and move things around, and that's why I like working digitally. So if anybody out there is interested in being creative in this capacity. 
I highly recommend the, the iPad because it's a, it's a great place to explore, especially if you like me have ever dealt with perfectionism and <laughs> you're scared to put paint on a canvas because you're immediately thinking, oh, but what if I regret it? Well, when it comes to digital artwork, you can go back <laughs> and just press undo and it is a lovely, lovely feature. And I've actually found that the times where I am actually working with real paint, I'm actually more confident now because I've had all of this practice on my iPad. So I am a I am a iPad art <laughs> evangelist in that sense. And I think it's a wonderful way to stay creative in a time where you know sometimes it can be hard to do that. So I wanted to take a moment and open it up to questions if anyone had anything. And I did see, I did see one question mark in there. And I'm gonna go back over to the to the um to the chat and just make sure that I get it. So uh, yes, uh, someone asked, what is the device you just showed to make your artwork with? Yeah, so that is the, I have the iPad 12.9 inch. I, this is not the latest edition, but um, I, and this is kind of embarrassing, but I'll just tell you, I, I didn't even know that they had made a new iPad that was just all touch screen until like seven months after it came out. And I am a full-time artist. I just happened to be in the store and I was like, ooh, what's that? And they're like, that's the new iPad that's actually not new. So I say all that to say, it really doesn't matter what tablet you have, as long as you have something that has one of these guys, which is a nice stylus. So I use the Apple Pencil. So you guys remember back in the day, the really felt tip styluses. Um, I, those I don't use. So another question is, how do you get started with poems? Have words always come naturally to you? You're so talented. Well, thank you so much for, um, for asking that question. Um, poetry has always come naturally to me, but I didn't know it was poetry. And what I mean by that is, I've always been this person who, after I walk away from a conversation with someone or I, I'll remember something from 10 years ago and I'll just kind of go through this sort of paced thought in my mind of like, I always want to remember that moment or, you know, the way they laughed or I wish I had said this. And I didn't really know that that was a lot of, that that was a lot of how poetry gets written. So for me, a lot of poetry is tapping into my own memory. Um, when I'm writing for other people, I, I look for a connection to that emotion that they're expressing or at least that's coming up for me. And then I think of something in my own life that maybe I'm still searching for words for. So yeah, it's it, it comes natural in the sense that I think poetry is everywhere. I say this all the time. I literally think that there is poetry in our text messages. If you go through your text messages, you'll see that you've said things to people that are, are unique. And and even if it's just a few words, it's it's, worth pinning down in your journal, it's worth writing down. I'm super passionate and curious about that. So, so yeah, it's, it's always come natural to me, but I just, I'm in a place now where I'm just trying to grasp it better <laughs> and pay attention to it more and just kind of like, just put it on paper. So I, I love physical journey, but my iPhone notes app, I literally carry this thing with me all, you know, everywhere, just like everybody else. And I have, I'll just open a notes app for the day and I'll just write down, write down things, whether they make me upset or whether they make me laugh. Um, I, I literally had a moment, this is like my last flight before I was, I haven't flown anywhere in a while, but earlier this year, my very last flight, like I heard some flight attendants talking about Tammy and it was a Tammy that they worked with and Tammy wasn't, wasn't doing what everyone wanted, everyone wanted Tammy to do. And I just cracked up laughing. I, I just thought it was so funny. So for me, I just kind of wrote down this little dialogue of what I thought they were talking about. And I literally have never talked about that <laughs> until right now. Um, but for me, it's that story is just a matter of like, just paying attention to things that you think are funny. And every now and then I, I think about Tammy, and I'm just like, man, they never, Tammy never found out that like, people were talking about her <laughs> behind, behind her back. And I just, I wish she knew. And I don't know, I just think that that little quirky things like that, that's that's kind of what makes us writers. Um, so how has this pandemic helped you grow your craft? 
this pandemic has really helped me. Um, this that, that sounds weird to say, um, but I mean like this, the the time away, the isolation um, that I wasn't anticipating. It is just it is just helped. It has really caused me to really narrow in. We had a lot of big things planned this year. I think actually this right now I was supposed to be in Australia. Actually, <laughs> we were going to be in Australia for a huge part of October. And it's just really caused me to realize like, it can be, you know, creativity is like, yes, I dream of so of all these big things, but I can find a lot of things right here where I am. One thing that's happened is I've read a lot more poetry books during the pandemic because I have a little one at home. I have a 17 month old and I feel like if I, if I had like lived by myself or if I, you know, I was younger and it was just me, I think I would be like, oh, I'm just gonna go start reading novels. Well, I don't have time to read novels. I wish I did, but I found this unique thing with poetry and I'm like, there's so many, po I read poetry all the time, but there's still so many poets that I've discovered this year. And I've bought anthologies, like one of my favorite, um, uh, one of my, I think I thought I had it right by me, but one of my favorite anthologies that I've found is, um, it's the Norton Anthology of, of Contemporary Native American Poets. And if you just search for that, you'll find it. And I think it's called When the Light Was Subdued. And I've just, I've become so educated in, in, in just a lot of like indigenous poetry. That's never, that's never been something that I dug into. And now I'm having that opportunity. So in that sense, it's, it's been inspiring me to um, make work that is um, more, here's, uh, here's another book. I actually just got this one yesterday, actually. It's a book of poems called Healing the Divide. And it's just been really rich and really beautiful during these times. And um, just in the little time I've had reading it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, if I were in Australia, if I were in Australia right now, I may not have that book. And now I have that book and it's special in its own way. And it's impacting me and it's meaningful to me in its own way. So yeah, it's really impacted me as it has a lot of other people. Um, and you know, not to get like too personal or anything, but I, mean, I, I have had people that I, that I know who are no longer with us uh, due to the pandemic. And so it's very, it's, it's very raw and serious for me in my life. And, and it's just made me so grateful for the moments that I have with my family and my friends. And, and yeah, yeah, it's, I think, I think now is a time that we need more poetry and more art more than ever before. So if you're listening to this, I, I recommend, you know, getting some poetry books, getting some, you don't have to get mine. <laughs> I have one, but <laughs> there are others out there that are wonderful. And just having some poetry by your bedside, having some poetry on the coffee table and just flipping it open and allowing it to, to ground you and, and center you and bring you back to the present moment. That's been that's been huge for me. And I find that I'm the most creative. And I'm, I'm probably my best version of creative artist, poet, <laughs> when I'm in the present moment and I'm not <laughs> so focused on the future and worrying. So yeah, I think I saw one more question. Um, oh, I think I answered that already of just, um, you know, what is the device that I use and just talking about art. So yeah, I, whoever's watching, I don't know if you consider yourself an artist or not, but yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely think that we all have something worth sharing. And for me, like I've begun to redefine how I think about success. And I, I think when I was younger, I'm, I'm, thir I'm 30 now. And I think when I was about, you know, in my early twenties, especially, I really kind of defined success by, um, especially being in music about topping, charts and <laughs> having as many people hear your music as possible but now I'm really starting to see success it's like if I can just help one person just fill out one more page in their journal just doodle one more sketch in their sketchbook try to write a poem one more time um I think it's worth it because that has made a huge difference in my life and actually what led to all of my projects, me having, having a wonderful opportunity to work with anthropology and lots of other really cool things that have happened. A lot of it is, is it started with just 
barely, barely, barely finding the courage to just try to write a poem one more time, <laughs> to just try to make art one more time. And it has just made a huge difference in my life. So I hope that I can inspire and encourage everyone else to, to do the same. And to everyone, to Chandler and to Melissa and Sheena and Evita and uh, Genevieve, Thank you so much for sharing your stories with me. It was such an honor to write with you in mind. And that's something that I still do. So if I didn't write for you today, you can always reach out to me and I try to get to as many people as I possibly can. But it was such a, a joy to be able to do this with you all today. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Thursday. And I hope that you continue to keep creating in the waiting and and yes there's some amazing stuff inside of you that is just ready to come out and if we can just all just remind ourselves and remind each other to stay present pre present present <laughs> southern accents coming out um stay present and keep breathing deep that uh those beautiful things will come out oh and i forgot to talk about my book here and I'm reading Kelly's message. She says, you've helped so many people. Oh, thank you, including me, by encouraging me to keep hope alive and keep going. I wanna say thank you for sharing your work. You've given all of us so much during this difficult time. That means so much. And, and thank you, Evita. And um, here's my book, All Along You Are Blooming. And this is a book of poems. It is full color, all illustrated by me. And it is out there in the world. And yes. And I did see one more question come in, how did anthropology find you? You know, I'm not sure. Um, wow, just had a full circle moment. So the first person left a comment that they were in San Francisco. All I know is that I was in San Francisco when I first saw email from anthropology and I was literally by the Golden Gate Bridge and I was super excited because <laughs> I am a fan. So yeah, the first comment I saw in here was about San Francisco and I was just talking about that. I've been to San Fran one time and yeah, that was a pretty pivotal moment of that trip. I was like, what is happening? And yes, anthropology does carry my book all along. You are blooming. So I am super grateful. And I, someone asked, can you speak any other language? Oh, how I wish I could. Oh my goodness. I know a few words in a few languages, but it's nothing to write home about. So <laughs> um, yes, thank you all so much again. Um, thank you, Jessica, and all of the, the team at Anthropology. I've really enjoyed being able to work with you all. I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. <laughs>